Okay, so welcome back to the Joe Clyde Daniels case. If you haven't seen part one already, you are gonna be unbelievably confused. So go watch that one first. It'll be linked down below. So watch that one first and then come back. And if you're coming from part one, welcome back. I'm just gonna jump straight back into it. So on the 9th of April, Crystal Daniels was taken in for questioning. So the authorities gave Crystal intimate details about Joseph's confession. And I mean, according to Crystal, she just woke up and baby Joe was just gone. The detective kept asking her, did he hit baby Joe? Did he hit baby Joe? Did he hurt baby Joe? You know, and it basically went on for Crystal to say that she only knows that Joseph Daniels hurt baby Joe because the TBI told her. For those of you not in the US, the TBI is just the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. And Crystal's there asking them like, do you expect me to give you every last detail of something I didn't even see? Like, what are you looking for here? But they just kept telling her, you know what happened, you heard baby Joe screaming, you know exactly where he is now and you know exactly what happened to him. And you don't even care enough about baby Joe to tell us the truth. Like, it's almost like you're happy that he's gone. But following this, they then accused her of removing Joe Clyde's body and covering up Joseph's crime. And then one thing led to another and Crystal was charged with aggravated child neglect, criminal responsibility, and filing a false report. I just wanna bring a few things up with you. There were some sketchy things that happened around the day that baby Joe went missing. On the 4th of April, Joseph returned from allegedly dumping Joe Clyde's body. And not long after this, he and his stepson, Alex, baby Joe's older brother, went out for a drive. And this was confirmed by a parent of another child that lived down the street from them because they were waiting for the school bus that morning and Joseph had also said, let the bus driver know that baby Joe won't be going to school today because he's missing. Joseph then called the school and told them the same, baby Joe won't be in school today because he's missing, we can't find him. He then called his parents to tell them and only then did he make the 911 call. Editing Kate here. I'm just popping in to reiterate over this. I did read this on one or two articles, but looking back over it, I don't know what time these children went to school, but for Joseph to have done all this and let the school know and let the parent at the bus stop know before 6.22 a.m. when he made the 911 call, that seems like very early. So I just wanna let you know, but also bear in mind that I'm speaking about this now as if that is the truth. If it's an emergency, what are you wasting time for? It sounds like he wasn't necessarily worried about the whereabouts of baby Joe and it sounds like he didn't really think it was an emergency because he knew he wasn't gonna get his son back. Here's another really weird thing. On the 5th of April, Crystal Daniels posted a link from a Facebook page and this link said the following. It stated, sad news to report father arrested on charge of homicide and death of five-year-old Dixon County boy. And the original post had been posted on the 4th of April. Hang on, let me just remind you here for a second. Joseph Daniels was not charged with the homicide of his five-year-old son until the 7th of April. So first of all, how did Crystal get this information? And second of all, how did the page administrator get this information? On the 4th of April, like the day baby Joe disappeared. Another strange occurrence on social media was at 11.21 on the 4th of April, Joseph Daniels posted a Facebook status. You would imagine he might be posting on Facebook to say like, this is a picture of my son, if anyone's seen him, let me know, like he's missing, you know, getting the word out there. <sighs> no, his Facebook status just said, happy. He knew at this point that he was missing. He made the call to 911 five hours earlier. The last thing I would be posting on Facebook if I was a parent of a child who's just gone missing is happy. First of all, because you should not be happy. And second of all, of how sketchy it looks that you are happy. Oh my God. I don't know what that was about. But moving on. All right, let's get into Crystal's account for the night, shall we? Because 
That's a whole other parent that we haven't even really visited yet. And let's be honest, Joseph's account is <laughs> all over the place. According to court documents, Crystal was in the home at the time that Joseph Daniels allegedly killed baby Joe, but she never reported any injuries or abuse or, you know, homicide. And according to Crystal, she heard a painful scream and then silence. She went into the living room, she saw Joseph Daniels standing over baby Joe with his fist clenched and baby Joe was just lying on the ground, not moving. Joseph then turned to her and said that if she told anyone that he would kill her too. That's when Joseph left and Crystal, would you believe it, went back to bed. No calling 911, no escaping with your other two children, no informing family members, no nothing. She just somehow drifted back off to sleep after witnessing her husband murdering her son. So that's Crystal's account of the night. Now on to Alex's account of the night. This is baby Joe's older brother. Alex was eight years old at the time, so he was still quite young but old enough to kind of know what's going on around him and when he was interviewed he said that someone stabbed baby joe to death but he couldn't remember who and this is potentially something that maybe his parents just told him to say but also it could have been a situation where he was in a sleepy daze you know it was the middle of the night it might have been dark who knows he's also a child he doesn't have a fully developed brain so for a child to witness something that violent and traumatic especially against his younger brother you know his brain might kind of make things up to kind of fill things in or essentially to repress the memory in some way. So over time, and what's not all that surprising, is the fact that Joseph's story has changed one or two more times. After a few months of being incarcerated for something he now claims he didn't do, he concocted a story where Crystal was the murderer. He said that actually Crystal smothered Joe Clyde and then turned to Joseph threatened him with a knife, forcing him not to tell anyone, and then dragged baby Joe's body out the back door and drove off, turning right onto Garners Creek Road. So <laughs> there are clearly so many statements in this case. You've got all kinds of claims coming from all kinds of directions, mainly from Joseph and Crystal. So let's go through a couple of the corroborated statements and the things that we pretty much do know happened. Number one, we have the statement that Joe Clyde left the house. This makes sense <laughs> simply because he's not there anymore. Whether he left on his own accord alive or he left after being murdered is another question, but we do know that in some shape or form, he, Joe Clyde, left the house. Another one of these corroborated statements is the witness statement from Daniel McCormick. Mr. McCormick apparently saw Joe Clyde alive between 12.45 and 1 in the morning. I say that it's corroborated because I did find some articles that say it was corroborated. Personally, I haven't seen any proof of that myself, so it, it is still hard to say. I'm not comfortable with saying it's 100% fact, but the authorities do believe that this person that Daniel McCormick saw was baby Joe. And if this is true, then this makes some other statements false statements, such as Joseph killing baby Joe between 11.30 p.m. and midnight that night, and then disposing of his body. This cannot be true if Joe Clyde was seen alive at 1 a.m. Now, speaking of false statements, if you'll remember Love's truck stop, the truck stop that Joseph allegedly stopped at to buy a Dr. Pepper on his way to dispose of his son's body that he just murdered. Um, this part of the story was proven false because of the CCTV at Love's truck stop. This CCTV showed no evidence of Joseph Daniels, Joe Clyde Daniels, Joseph's car at all on the night of the third moving into the fourth. And two years after the event, in fact, the TBI have come out to say that there is no evidence of any vehicle leaving the Daniels residence that night. And then if that was true, then that would in turn prove Joseph's statements false about Crystal driving off with the body. I mean, if no vehicle left the home, then 
nobody drove off with the body. Also, allegedly there was no movement on Crystal's phone during those hours, but there was some movement on Joseph's. He went around the back of the house and then around the side of the house, but there's no record of him leaving the property. But this also disproves some of Joseph's other accounts as well, because he said he used Crystal's phone for light when he was bringing Baby Joe's body out to the car. And then later when he claimed Crystal was the one that left with Baby Joe's body, there was no sign of Crystal's phone leaving the property. Now, what I will say is maybe she didn't bring her phone, which would have been a very smart move if she did leave the house with a body in the middle of the night. Do you see what I'm saying here? There are so many inconsistencies in this case. There's so much crap thrown around and it's, it, it's difficult, if not impossible, to know what actually happened. So I'm gonna get back to the time passing and how things have gone in this case. On the 23rd of October, 2018, Joseph Daniels was found competent to stand trial after weeks of evaluations. But also on this day, he very much took his confession back and put the blame on Crystal and an unidentified man. So here we have another theory from Joseph. In a letter he wrote to his parents, Joseph states that he believes baby Joe is still alive and that Crystal is just hiding him from him in order to frame him. And according to this theory from Joseph, Crystal allegedly called someone in the middle of the night. And as time has gone on, this person has looked more and more guilty. But essentially he says what happened is Crystal got baby Joe dressed, she packed a bag for him and left him outside for some random man to come pick him up. Well, maybe he wasn't random. We don't know. He's an unidentified man. Now, <sighs> as much as this sounds like just another one of Joseph's out there theories and just, it's like Joseph is trying to solve this crime as an outsider, it's weird. But get this, on the 12th of March, 2020, this year, video evidence surfaced that showed the Daniels residence on the night of baby Joe's disappearance. This clip shows a vehicle showing up to the house at 2.39 a.m. Someone gets out of the vehicle, goes in front of the headlights for a little bit, gets back into the car, and drives away. Now the footage is very grainy, but according to the experts, this is what happened. And when you think about that in and of itself, that, oh. <laughs> if I think about someone showing up to my house at 2.39 in the morning, getting out of the car, getting back in the car and driving off, that's sketchy. That's sketchy on its own. But the fact that this happened on the night that baby Joe disappeared, hmm. That's pretty significant. But then who is this person? And look, maybe the police have leads, maybe they have an inkling as to who this person was, but as far as the public is concerned, there's no answers. But something I will say is at this point, it kind of seems like there's a bit more to what Joseph is saying than there is to what Crystal is saying. <laughs> I mean, there's not a whole lot of proof either way, but. Now, since we're talking about Joseph and Crystal anyway, let's have a little word on their relationship. Hmm. It certainly wasn't perfect. In fact, it was actually quite troubled to the point where up until late March, which was what, days before baby Joe went missing, Crystal was planning on leaving Joseph. Do you wanna know why? Because of all the physical abuse. And a bit more recently on their relationship, Joseph has said that he has been giving Crystal hell and that anything they ask me about Crystal, I attack her. He says, she's playing with fire and she's going to get burned. On the 9th of August, 2019, Crystal Daniels comes out and says that she wants a divorce. But <laughs> interestingly then, on the 2nd of December, 2019, Joseph Daniels stated that he would not agree to a divorce unless Crystal comes clean and tells the truth about what really happened to Joe Clyde Daniels. And this case was supposed to go to trial for Crystal and Joseph in August of 2020, but unfortunately that has now been postponed until 2021. And the reason for this is the authorities and the experts need all the time they can get to sift through the hundreds of security clips from the area on the night of baby Joe's disappearance. Both Crystal and Joseph are still in jail on a million dollar bond each. And there's also the fact that Crystal's defense attorney has withdrawn from the case. I don't know why, it could easily be personal reasons, like, I don't know, but they needed to get someone else and that person had to start from scratch and look at every little bit. So 
yeah, that's gonna take a bit of time. So moving on to the 21st of May, 2020. A tip came into the TBI where a person saw something suspicious on the Daniels residence. And also the TBI hadn't really any good reason to believe that Joe Clyde Daniels had left the property. Yes, I know we've been through the fact that this is one of the only corroborated statements. I know this case is all over the place. Whatever the case may be, they had a search warrant to search around the Daniels property. Although they didn't search inside the home, they did cut down a good few bushes around the place. They dug a few holes, that kind of thing. So these searches continued into the following day. And although it initially looked like they weren't really getting anywhere, then they found some stuff. Investigators took 26 bones and bone fragments, two bags of dirt, a root ball and plastic. But it seems that these bones and bone fragments were just from family pets that they had buried on the property. And it's so hard for the family. Like they wanna know what happened to baby Joe, but they also know that if they get answers, they're probably gonna be really hard to take. And that would more than likely bring in a whole new world of heartbreak. There is one little piece of information from this case that warms my heart but also breaks my heart at the same time and it's that baby joe's grandmother leaves the light on in the porch every night in the hope that it might help baby joe to find his way home okay let's summarize all the theories uh i'm gonna entertain them all so if you're into going down some little rabbit holes like dipping your toes into some rabbit holes let's go Theory number one, Joseph did it. First of all, he admitted to it. Second of all, he was obviously on the property when this crime took place. Not to mention, Crystal claims that she saw Joseph beating Joe Clyde to death and threatening to kill her too if she told anyone. But admitting to a crime and then not remembering the location of the body, it's up to you whether you wanna believe that he doesn't remember or not. It's a strange concept, especially now that he's saying Crystal was the one who killed him. But then it could have been the type of thing where Joseph was like, okay, I'll do the right thing, I'll come clean. And then once he came clean, he realized, oh wait, now I'm gonna have to be in jail for the rest of my life. And he thought, okay, how do I get out of this? And maybe that's where all these new theories are coming from. <sighs> but then there's also the fact that he was told by the authorities that if he told the truth or like if he told them that he was responsible that he would walk free so maybe he only said it for that very reason something that's very important to be aware of though is the fact that there is actually a, a lot of people out there that don't believe that joseph committed this crime and i in a way i get where they're coming from i mean he was under so much pressure in those interrogations he doesn't seem like the smartest person he was also very vulnerable with his own mental health issues. I mean, like I said before, the fact that he was the type of person who could just black out and then just show up again. And I mean, you can see that from two sides. You could see it as he's the type of person who can black out and kill his son and not remember it. Or you could see it as he's the type of person who blacks out. Well, then maybe he's really vulnerable to these interrogation techniques, especially the dirty techniques that the police very obviously used in this case. Theory number two is that Crystal did it. This is a two-pronged theory. It's either theory 2A, that Crystal smothered Joe with a pillow, threatened Joseph with a knife, and drove off with the body, or theory 2B is Crystal called someone in the middle of the night, left baby Joe on the side of the road, and this person picked them up. Obviously, this is corroborated by some vehicle showing up at 2.39 in the morning. Weird. I also did read somewhere that Crystal admitted at one point to killing Joe herself, but then she recanted that statement, saying that she wasn't on her medical health meds at the time, she wasn't in a good place, she just wanted them to stop asking her questions. But I, I haven't even seen this in more than one article, so I don't know if that's... 100% fact. Theory number three is that both of them had something to do with Baby Joe's murder. There are a lot of people out there that think they both beat Baby Joe to death. In a way, it kind of makes sense. I mean, their relationship has clearly gone down the toilet and now they're both accusing each other. So of course they wouldn't have the other person's back anymore because, you know, 
they don't want to be together anymore. But then like there's not really any evidence for this theory at all. Theory number four is that baby Joe was abducted by someone external to the household with no contact with any of the people in the household. Something that's almost totally disregarded for whatever reason in this case is the fact that there were sex offenders living in the area at the time and these people were either not questioned at all or questioned very lightly. It's a little concerning when you've got a five-year-old going missing and never showing up again. And Joe Clyde may not have been murdered. Like we don't even have proof that the child is dead. He would be eight years old at this point and there's a chance that he's just being held hostage by some freak. But the freaks in the area weren't even looked into properly. So the video of the vehicle pulling up to the Daniels residence could align with this theory, but <laughs> the amount of time the car was stopped would definitely not be enough for a person to get out of the car, go into the house, like sneak into the house, take a child, come back out, put the child in the car and drive away. Like there's no way, unless maybe one person was on foot and then it was a getaway car. But then surely if it was a getaway car, the driver wouldn't just get out of the car because that wouldn't make sense if it's a getaway car. <laughs> but what I will say is if baby Joe was abducted, isn't it a little convenient that the family history and the family background is so messed up and his parents had a terrible relationship? Isn't that a little convenient? Wouldn't you as the abductor, if you were looking at the news, and you saw that the child's father confessed to the murder, wouldn't you be like, oh my God, this is brilliant. I didn't realize their household was so messed up. Like, do you get what I'm saying? It's just, it's a little convenient, like, mm. Anyway, theory number five is that Joe Clyde wandered off and got into some kind of trouble, whether it be as a result of the elements or a wild animal or something. Now, this theory is very much just that, a theory. There's no evidence because there's no body. Surely he couldn't be that well hidden if he just wandered off and, and died. And even if it was a wild animal that got to him, wouldn't his bones still be around? And there haven't been any of Joe Clyde's bones recovered. So it's important to mention it because it's not beyond the realms of possibility, but the only thing that makes it possible is the fact that he did used to leave the house and wander off. But then didn't Crystal say that the door was locked at like one or 2 a.m.? But then, well, what if he left at 3 a.m.? Like, I don't know. But then I suppose Daniel McCormick's witness statement of seeing potentially Joe Clyde a couple hundred meters down the road, that could corroborate it. Maybe he was just out and about. Maybe he just wandered off. But that brings me to the end of this case. Wow. The most recent updates on this case were from this year. So there will definitely be updates in the coming months. And I might even do a part two, or if this is the part two, then I might have to do a part three when after the trial happens. And if I do, then it will be linked down below. But that's like for months and months in advance. So if you're watching this in like a year, but the trial should be taking place in 2021. So that will be very interesting to see what happens there. Personally, I have no clue what I think because there's just so many inconsistencies. It's, it's just so hard to even form an opinion. Also now there is a $10,000 reward for any information that leads to the whereabouts of Joe Clyde Daniels because this case has essentially gone cold. This child disappeared in the middle of the night and not a single trace of him has been found since. It's very, very upsetting and my heart truly goes out to his family. Uh, I mean, I don't know if my heart goes out to his parents. I mean, if they're innocent, then yeah, it does, but uh, I, I don't know what to think. And if on the odd chance that baby Joe Clyde is still alive, then I just hope that someday he gets to return home and that he's okay. <sighs> that would be incredible. Like that would be best case scenario, but he is presumed to be dead. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like and leave a comment down below. This is one that like, because there's so many like 
question marks. I would love to know what you think about it. You guys usually have really interesting opinions and like little things that I wouldn't have even thought of. So leave your thoughts below. I, yeah, I mean, I've said it five times now. I don't even know with this case. My TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter are all katephilpot underscore yt. And I do case updates over there. I do more true crime content. So definitely head over there and give me a follow. Otherwise, if you've gotten this far in the video or in these two videos, if it was a two-parter, and you haven't subscribed already, I mean, I think you should subscribe. I mean, you've already dealt with this much of me talking. So like, you know you can handle me now. Don't leave me hanging. <laughs> Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.